I want to look at characteristics of soldier, which Paul highlighted in this passage. The first one is endurance. Endurance. Come on, endurance. Can you say with me, endurance? Yeah, Paul said, endure hardship. Endure hardship. So, which means, so, you know, service is tough. I'm fine, serving. <laughs> men, men will, will just be on your nerves. Men will write so many things about you. They will say so many things about you. But you need to learn to endure. And that is to be resilient. To be resilient. You don't just give in. You keep going. You keep going. Quitters don't win. And winners don't quit. And to endure is to suffer long. Is to stay the course. Despite the difficulties. Despite the trials. You know, we've known some people, they quit just because a young girl, you know, did not greet them. That's because a young girl was rude to them. That's the reason to quit service. You have to endure. If you are a soldier, for you to be a soldier, you don't just quit, you endure. And I pray, now let me read Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews 12, 1. I want you to see, I want you to see the way Jesus endured. The way Jesus endured, Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews 12, 1. Uh, to two, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now said, looking unto Jesus, learn from Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, see that word now, endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Critics will show up when you serve. People will talk when you serve, when you are faithful, when you know what you are doing. Especially when you do it right, they will call you names. Jesus despise the shame. You see, despising is a continuous thing. You have to embrace the mind of Jesus. You too must endure. And I pray God will give you the skill, the grace in Jesus' name. The second one is training. Training. I want to be a soldier. They can't just take civilians and just send them out and say, be, be a soldier, be carrying weapons. No. They undergo training, real drilling. You see, now to be a soldier of Christ, you too must be well trained. Now, church, we have a lot of different discipleship platform, training platform. We have believers class. We have workers in training. You know, we have training for ministers, training for directors. We have Reg Line, Restoration Global Leadership Institute. So we have all kinds of training. So if you've not had any training, it's good you start. Just register. Your registration is on the website, the form, or you can call the office. You need to know the cutting edge. And training is not once. In fact, every year, twice, we run workers' workshop for everyone. Training is not, it's not just once. We've just finished, you know, training our leaders, our directors. There is this Redeemers Institute, uh, Redeemers uh, Institute. 
in, in North America. And they helped us with the training. If our own church, very powerful training. So we need to know the cutting edge. We need to unlearn, we need to learn, and we need to relearn. There are some things you have, you know, downloaded into your system that needs to go. Because they are making you commit error. They are making you misinterpret information. They are making you not to change the way God wants you to change. That's to unlearn and it's tough. And we need to learn new things. We need to relearn. So training is very, very important. In fact, Paul wrote it that we need to be well trained. He told Timothy, the same Timothy, that it needs to be well trained. He says, study yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed. If you are well trained, you won't be ashamed. He said, rightly dividing the word of truth. Every scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction, so that a man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. And the Bible also says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So you see, we need knowledge. We need training to be a good soldier. Of Christ. So this man, Epaphroditus, was well trained. He was well trained. And the next thing is discipline. Discipline. Disciplined. Every soldier is expected to be disciplined. In fact, they ensure they follow rules. They follow rules. And if they don't, in fact, there's this, you know, mantra, obey first and then complain. In fact, obey the highest order. You have to obey first. Yeah, your superior is giving instruction. You have no say but to obey. They follow rules. They obey commands. Part of the discipline is the uniform. They must wear uniform. <laughs> they won't say, oh, I don't like this uniform. I don't like the color. I don't like the boots. In fact, one man was saying the way they, you know, the way they clothe them, even is to their undergarments. Because when they bring you as a civilian to their camp, they change your orientation. In fact, at times, the first thing they do, they even first scrape your hair. They want you to know that now you have an authority that you must obey, even in the kingdom, in serving God. For Paul to call Epaphroditus a fellow soldier, he must be a disciplined man. He must be a man that obey commands, a man that served well. What instructions of your superior are you resisting? For your service to be complete, your obedience must be complete. It's important. So to be a soldier of Christ, you must be disciplined. Then four, engage in warfare. You are engaged in warfare. You see a soldier, in fact, they are training them, they are planning, they are preparing on a daily basis for warfare. And you also, as a soldier of Christ, you should know that we engage in warfare. And that war is with the enemy, the devil, Satan. John 10, 10. Who has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. First Thessalonians 2 18, Paul said, I will have come to you, church, but Satan hindered me. To let you know, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. You know, we need to fight this enemy. In Ephesians 6, from 10 to 18, you know, Paul started by saying, stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So we wrestle not against flesh, from verse 12, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. 
rulers of darkness, rulers of wickedness, powers of darkness. So they are out there. So you need to know that we have been called to fight. That's why Psalm 144 verse 1 says, you need to teach your fingers to fight and your hand to war. You see, the reason for prayer now as a Christian, who wants to make significant impact in the world? Because the devil does not want you to make impact. The devil wants to distract you. The devil wants to steal you. The devil wants to kill you. You have to stand. You have to put on the whole armor of God. And that's what Paul wrote in Ephesians 6. So you need to be conscious of the fact that we are engaged in warfare. The helmet of salvation. Be conscious of your salvation. You can't say you are serving in church and you are not saved. The breastplate of righteousness. You have to be righteous. So you have to be conscious of your righteousness. Of your standing before God. You can't be playing with sin. And you say you are serving in church. Men may not see, but God sees it. He talks about the birth of truth. You can't be a liar and you are serving. Your service is, is not acceptable. You have to tell the truth. So be conscious of what you say. Be conscious of what you do. All these things matter. And your attitude talks about shoes of readiness. Talks about the shield of faith. You need faith in this journey. And you need to be offensive with the word of God. Talks about the sword of the spirit. You see, you, you need to be well dressed. You need to be ready at all times. Don't expose yourself to the enemy. We are engaged. We are engaged in warfare on a daily basis. And as a soldier, you please your master. You please your master. You please your master. And this is the last one. You please your master. If you can remind me the first one, endurance. What are the characteristics of a soldier? We talked about endurance. We talked about training. The second one. A soldier must be disciplined. The third one. And we say you engage in warfare. And to, to, uh, the last one, you please your master, which is the fifth one. You have to please your Lord. Your service must be acceptable to the master. Let me show you again in Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. The Bible talks about acceptable service in verse 28. He said, wherefore... We receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. You see? Grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably. How? With reference. And godly fear. If, you, if your service must please God, you must know how to honor God. You can't serve God casually. No. And you honor God by also honoring his servant. You have to honor your pastor. There's no two way about it. You have to honor your leader, the ministers, your directors. If you are serving, you must please your master. The anointing you attack, you cannot attract. You must please your master. And get it clear. Your service must be acceptable to the master. And what I've seen is that is grace. And thank God for the writer of Hebrews. You need that grace. If people are just coming around you, all what they are doing is to talk against the man of God, against the church. They are talking about men of God. 
You are the first one to like it on Facebook when people condemn. You are in problem. You need grace to serve God acceptably. We need to reference God. We need to fear him. That's the way to serve. Check your service. We're talking about Epaphroditus. Selfless service. Let me conclude. Uh, let me give this uh, nugget. One, see service as a privilege. See service as a privilege. It's not a right. I don't think I'm gifted. I can just do it. No. Some people have come like that. Just think they are gifted and they can just. No. You need the right spirit. You need the right mind. And so we don't just allow people to serve anyhow. We check your character. And God is more interested in your character than in your comfort. See service as a privilege. I thank God for some people in our church. They excite me. Committed. Faithful. Wow. They see service as a privilege. That's the way I see it. But just think about life. You only have one life. Life that can go. It's a man that is in honor and does not know it. It's like the beast of the field that perish. So it's an honor to serve God. You better know it. You need to recognize the honor, the grace God has given you. One, to bring you here. Two, to make you alive. Three, to have the capacity to serve. It's an honor. A man that is in honor and does not know it said it's like the beast of the field. That perish. See it as a privilege. And the second one, there is work to do in the kingdom. And I'm saying it again in Restoration House, there are a lot of works to do. We can train you. In fact, I wish 10 people would send me a message today. I want to walk behind the camera. I wish you'd be one of them. Young man, you are not too old. Don't think I'm 50 something. I'm, no, you are not too old to serve God. Come on, come on, stand behind the camera. We can train you. You can still join the choir if you can sing. You can walk in the church office. There are a lot of places. There is work to do in the kingdom. Acts 13, 36 talks about a man who made him part. We all know him. He's so popular in Israel. They don't call him David. They call him King David. This is the secret of his life. Acts 13, 36. He was a man given to service for David after he had served his own generation by the will of God fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. This scripture is fearful. David, after he had served, you are not even serving. You better don't sleep now and see corruption. Because service speaks. So get into it. Service is here. You cannot be too big to serve in God's house. Delay gratification. Your service will determine your lifting. Elijah served Elijah. God lifted him up. Elijah performed 16 notable miracles. Elijah performed double portion, 32 notable miracles. So service determine your lifting. Focus on heaven for a reward. And I'm encouraging someone. Focus on heaven. Do not compete with others. Know that you will give account of your stewardship.